Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Director of Football Challenge with Livorno. In today's episode we have the summer transfer window and of course our Director of Football has been at it again. So one of the things we've managed to avoid in this summer is the Director of Football selling any of our major players. Non, no big teams have come in for anyone to be honest with you. We haven't got the players that are actually attracting interest from bigger clubs than ourselves so we're still yet to see uh, an offer come in for any of our youngsters, for instance, which I know is a big, big concern for myself and some of you lot. But in terms of those who did join the club this season, we have seen a little bit more activity in terms of trying to bring people in on permanent transfers for actual transfer fees. A lot of them bids did actually end up failing, as you see here. We did make a couple, but a lot of the big bids that we made ended up falling flat at the contract stage. Unfortunately, despite uh, hiring an Italian director of football it has not stopped him going in the South American market so I have been rejecting quite a lot of offers that have went in for players which I didn't want to do I didn't want to get involved in it but I'm going to have to continue going forward we actually signed this guy called Pablo Malca and now he was the first Argentinian to join the club or South American or non-EU player to join the club but I could not register him for any reason I think there might be a wage limit as to what the non-EU players can join us at. I'm not sure what that is, but unfortunately he was the first to join, but he could not be registered. We've also signed Heber, who completely, oh, completely missed this one. I forgot to cancel it, and he's ended up joining the club. So he's going to be sitting here for the entire season on, what is that, £17,000 per week. It is doing absolutely nothing. I can't terminate his loan. He's probably going to be here for the duration of the season. That's my bad. But in terms of the players that did come in, we've just spoke about Malka, you'll never see him play for us. Nicola Maru is one of the ones that came in that I was really, really pleased with. He's an Italian left-back, incredibly well-rounded, a definite upgrade on Andrea Gasparro and any of our other options at left-back for that matter. And because we like to play quite attacking wing-backs, I think he'll be a really, really key player for us going forward. We do have an optional future fee of £234,000 for Nicola Maru, and I really, really hope that if he has a good season, our director of football activates it. Next to join the club on loan is Luca Mattazelli, a central midfielder from Sassuolo, and I think he'll fit our system incredibly well. All we are looking for in the central midfield is a couple of workhorses, you know, box-to-box -box midfielders or central midfielders to get up, up the pitch, support the strikers, get back to support the defence, and I think he'll be doing that quite well. He's really well-rounded mentally. Physically, he's quite good. Uh, his acceleration and agility are obviously problems, but it's not the end of the world. And technically, he's okay in the right areas. I think he'll be a key player for us for this season. Another loan option brought in from Sassuolo this time was Enrico Brignola. He is a winger, to be honest with you. He's not a striker. He's an inside forward on the right-hand side and a winger on the left. But we don't play wingers. Um, if, if my director of football had brought in a couple of more wingers, I might have considered it. But he can play up front. So that's where, if he does play, that's where he will be playing. We've obviously already spoken about Heber. He'll never play for us. Next up was Fabian Balbuena. Now, this was the guy who actually did take the non-EU spot for this season. He joined from Newcastle on quite a big loan deal for us. We are paying £125,000 per month, regardless of whether he is playing or not. We're only paying half his wages at £16,250. There is an optional future fee of £3 million. But due to the fact that he's 30 years old, I really hope our uh, director of football does not activate that. But he is definitely the best centre-back at the club at this time. Four-star rated, really good physically and mentally, and technically in the right places as well. He should be a key player as well. All of these three transfers, none of them will ever make it into my first team squad. They're all like 19 years old, released by other clubs, who've got like maybe a star potential. And they're all pretty hopeless, so you'll never see any of these. First to join the club on a transfer was Vicenzo Ferrari, a permanent transfer, £27,500 to us. Uh, left winger, he looks quite good actually, really well rounded for a 19 year old, but his potential looks quite limited, so maybe one to try and get a loan out of, see if we could make a bit of profit on him. Next up permanently was the return of Samuel Longo, he was at us on loan last season, it was from Spal I do believe it was, he only played 7 games, 1 goal and 1 assist. But he probably will find himself playing a lot more games this season purely because he's now a permanent transfer. So we signed him for a really cheap fee, £500,000 I could rise to. His wages aren't ridiculous. A three-star, three-star player. We'll wait and see to see how he gets on. And finally, the biggest signing of the summer, a £1.4 million transfer from Roma 
for Anta Koric. Now, I do understand, I think he's injury prone. It doesn't state it in his cons. But I think he's one of them players who's like maybe teetering on the brink of being injury prone. As you can see, he's, he's already injured. Um, I think he joined us whilst he was still injured, but the, the deal managed to get pushed through beyond that. He does play in that attacker midfielder role. Probably as a playmaker is his best role, but I'll be playing him as an attacker midfielder, as I'd like me playmaker to sit a little deeper. Um, he's really got the core stats needed for an attacker midfielder. Obviously, beyond that, he's not like really well-rounded in a sense of he could maybe play in central midfield. Wouldn't happen with this guy, but I am going to bank a lot on him. I think he's the first signing where I think we've brought him in and there's a good chance we'll actually be able to make profit on him. So that's the transfer business all said and done. We have played a couple of games in the league season already. We're in 2022, which is the year Qatar will hold the World Cup. So everything is pushed a little bit earlier. So we played Udinese in the opening game of the season and it was still in July. And we managed to get through this one and win in 2-1. Dominico Mangano got us a goal from central midfield. And Lucas Billens, Uoli, our two youngsters combining to get us the 2-1 win. It wasn't until the 87th minute that we did score as Lazar Markovic had given Udinese the lead. And to be honest with you, we were incredibly fortunate to get away with this one. We then played Frosinone in the Italian Cup third qualifying round. Uh, Philippe, hold on, some somebody told us how to pronounce this. So it was a Philippe Rajcevic, that's what I'm going with, Rajcevic. He scored two goals, 57th minute and 95th minute to get us through the Italian Cup. That's nice. And in the final game before today was against Roma away from home and they absolutely dominated us. Patrick Schick has been a really massive bugbear for me. He constantly scores against us. He got a double a day. Agassi with an own goal. El Shawari and Pellegrini for the goals for Roma. Balanzuoli and Rajcevic with the goals for us. And that leads us to today's game where we will be playing Inter Milan at home. Now I've got a bit of an issue. Salerno is the centre-back, the youngster who I really want to promote to the foot. I really want him to improve the first team this season. But now we've got two clear-cut preferred centre-backs and Luke Bogdan and Balbuena. So in the interests of not stunting his development, I think Bogdan's going to become our third choice centre-back. Right, this is the team that we're going to go with for today. Antonio Adan did request to leave the club um, in the summer, but it hasn't happened. Nobody really came in for him. He wants to return to Spain. He was missing his homeland, the poor little lad. What is he? 35 years old? Get a grip. You'd expect the 18-year-old to be coming to and that, but nevertheless, he does want to leave, but nobody was interested. So he's still at the club. Belangioli, Balbuena, Salerno and Maru will start in the defence. Agazi, Mattezelli, Mangano and Galvan will be in the diamond. With Sheep, Picasso and Brignola leading the line. We are struggling a little bit up front. Um, we've got... We do have Rajcevic who could play instead of Sheep, Picasso, But I kind of want to give him the game time just to get him back to match fitness. And Samuel Longo is still returning from injury as well. So we'll submit this team. Um, squad numbers to be given out. Champion, get them chucked in. And we'll see how we get on. So Inter Milan playing the standard AI 4-5-1. Gagliardini, Arthur, Kazawa, De Vries, Manalas, uh, some randomer. Wow, he's a little bit better than... Um, yeah, he's a little bit better. Hradecki, Maya, Chiesa, Del Rossen. I've never heard of this guy. Oh my, oh my dears. Loan from Barcelona, joining permanently. He is abs... I've never seen him. I can't remember ever seeing this guy on Football Manager. And Akadi, who likes to score against us as well. Well, it's going to be a tough challenge. We've just seen some of Inter Milan's players and they are clearly a step above what we've got. But hopefully our system can maybe prevail. Oh, early signs that were <laughs> maybe not. Highlight now and Federico Chiesa coming away with it for Inter Milan. Balba when he gets a challenge in but it slips through to Riccardi. And there's no offside flag there to save us. But it's going to VAR. And it has been ruled out by VAR. Thank God for that. VAR, best introduction ever. For now. Nicola Maru with a big kick up and Kurzawa can mop that up for Inter Milan. And hopefully, no, nah, it's going to be an Inter Milan chance here. Chiesa again, take the strike from the edge. And he goes very, very close to beating Antonio Adam. But it looks like we might get in the half-time nil-nil here. There is another highlight. Galvan gives the ball away and Chiesa is through again. He takes a strike this time. There was absolutely no save in that. What a thunder. Thunder rocket of a strike that was. And all that came from us giving the ball away. Galvan here just dilly-dallying on the ball. Didn't really have any options from our other players. And Chiesa finally gets his goal on the third attempt. And that was a hell of a strike. And that's going to be that for half time. We've sort of not looked in this game at all. Usually, you know, we usually create some opportunities for ourselves. But nobody's performed particularly well. Um, I think I'll have to change some stuff. 
Right, we've made some changes, nothing too major, just to try and see if we can maybe catch them on the break with the longer through balls, which we seem to score quite a lot of um, balls over the top of their defence in particular. But we'll wait and see. Mangano with a free kick high up the pitch. Come on, get this in the back of the net. Sheet Bacasa on the edge. Gets the ball in. Ridiculously, what a save that was. Balbuena nearly gets a goal. I think probably his first goal for Livorno. But Hradecki keeps us out. Another highlight, Maya with a free kick for Inter Milan. Oh, he goes really, really close. Inter Milan break on us this time. Cheers on the right-hand side. Gets the ball in. Accardi's there. And that is probably the end of the game. 2-0, 60 minutes in. In terms of substitutions, we haven't got that much on the bench, really, to affect this game going forward. So, um, I'm not even watching this. Right, we're nearly at 70 minutes. She because it is now struggling out there. I am going to bring on Arajevic. To maybe freshen things up. Domenico Mungo can come on for Mangano. Brian Galvan's going to have to stay on. Um, Bill Anzioli will come off. We'll put on Gasparo. And we'll see if just the fresh legs can maybe just keep just keep it at 2-0. Maybe get a goal back, Galvan. Maybe not. And the second half just went away without anything else happening. In a Milan 2, Livorno 0. <laughs> uh, you can't say it was undeserved. They completely deserved that. And we've got some work to do. So in terms of the league table, we are currently sitting in 12th after three games. Obviously, we'll not get a clearer picture as to where our teams stand in this league until further on in the season. But the board expectation has been upped. We are expected to avoid relegation this season. No longer can we just attempt to avoid it. So we do have a little bit more pressure on our hands. In terms of the next episode, we are going to fly through the first seven games or so. And we're going to come back for the Atalanta game in the beginning of October. We've got a hectic schedule in October. Um, purely because, look, no matches in November whilst the World Cup is on. December is out as well, so we won't return then till the January transfer window after October is finished. What do you think of the summer transfer signings? I think uh, Anta Koric is the first one where I can really say I'm actually a little bit excited. You know, we've obviously got the youngsters coming in. As long as they keep improving, they will improve this side overall. But in terms of transfers, I think Anta Koric is the first one that you can really see that's massively improved our team. Anyway, if you've enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like and if you enjoy my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.